This week on Maker Update, a bike that's too much for a kid like you, a machine that spills the beans, upside down printing, and cracking the code on number stations. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update, the show where we show off all the cool things that makers are making. I'm Tyler Weingarner and I hope you're all doing great. We've got a fantastic show and I can't wait to get into it. So let's check out the project of the week. Over on Hackaday, I learned about this custom motorcycle by Ota Kobo, and I just knew I needed to dig into it. This is a completely original motorcycle whose design takes inspiration from Kaneda's high-performance motorcycle from the movie Akira. Like the original motorcycle, this is a fairly low seat and a step-through design. But unlike the original motorcycle, it makes use of a single-sided hub center steering design for the front wheel. So the long, low profile of the bike doesn't result in a shallow rake and sluggish handling. The power plant of the motorcycle is the twin cylinder engine from a Kawasaki Ninja 250. The frame is completely custom and looks like a welded tubular design. There's a few different chain linkages to get the power from the engine back to the rear wheel, which also uses a single sided swing arm. In the hour long video that's just music, motion, and subtitles, you get to see the fabrication of the control arms and linkages, the fuel tank, bodywork, steering system, the whole lot. Some of it is in montages of still photos and some of it is in high speed time lapses. But almost all of it involves a lot of really gorgeous TIG welds and sheet metal fabrication. There's even an electronically deployed side stand that hides behind this metal panel when it's not in use. While the frame gets a paint job in the classic red of Canada's motorcycle, the external bodywork gets the DeLorean treatment and just exists with the unfinished look of stainless steel. I think they wanted to showcase all the handwork that went into every part of this motorcycle. When it's all said and done, the fit and finish on this project is just gorgeous and clearly the product of hundreds of hours of work. And it solves the problems with the original design of the motorcycle. It's just incredible. More projects. Irik Brandel has been hard at work at building Shell Tethered Vesper, a wall hanging art piece that's also an interactive sound sculpture. The structure itself comes from several layers of laser cut acrylic plastic. And one of the things he wanted to avoid was the idea that the sculpture would be flat. He wanted layers and dimensionality. And that's exactly what this is. All of the circuitry in this exists as its own circuit sculpture, with long rows of rigid rods connecting the various layers of the circuit together. The speaker element hangs below the main structure as its own piece, hopefully to not be too distracting. The sculpture reacts to human presence by way of a PIR sensor, and there's also this visual element of fiber optic tubes and colored lighting. It's gorgeous stuff. Greg from the Gregulations YouTube channel wants to solve a problem that's as old as science fiction, to create a robot that will cook him breakfast while he sleeps. Because he's British, his ideal breakfast is made of four elements, toast, beans, eggs, and sausage. His approach is to look at this as if it were any other CNC machine, and for each function, to minimize the amount of axes required for each process, since those add complexity and points of failure. Speaking of failures, there's some really great teachable moments in this video, like how the nichrome wire he's using to cook various parts of the meal, well, it expands when it heats, and it can short out your circuit. I also love that the inspiration for this robot comes from Wallace and Gromit. There's even an app he can use to control the machine, selecting which elements he wants and how he'd like them to be cooked. And of course, when breakfast will be served. Over on Hackaday, I also learned about Number Mumble by Audio Wanderer. This is a device that procedurally creates the audio of a Cold War era number station. Number stations were tools allegedly used by both sides of the Iron Curtain to broadcast secure information to spies and nonsense to anyone else who didn't understand the code. The numbers in this project are selected randomly, so there's no encoded message. 
probably. But it does handle the crackle and white noise of a weak audio transmission. There's also no included radio broadcasting feature as part of this project, but there are ways around that. And on Instructables, I found this project for a wearable arcade cabinet by Ari Noor. This is a pretty straightforward approach to a Raspberry Pi based arcade cabinet, just made portable and with big chunky buttons for the players. The structure is all made out of cardboard, so it's lightweight and wearable by his daughter. It's a cool project, but the other takeaway is that apparently in Iceland, they celebrate Ash Wednesday like it's a second Halloween. Two Halloweens. We should be more like Iceland. Time for some tips and tools. Over on his channel, 3D Jake has a guide on how to print any surface texture on your 3D printed objects. Most folks are familiar with fuzzy skin, which is a tool included in a lot of 3D printing slicers, but that's the only tool we have. This video takes you through the process of bringing your model into Blender, applying a displacement texture to it to give it some physicality, and then exporting it back into your 3D slicer for printing. On the Punish Props YouTube channel, they've got a great video on why you should consider learning digital sculpting. Bill Duran is well known for his CAD-based work for designing props. But his buddy Chad from Hoku Props shows his approach for making more organic shapes, like this Lich King armor. They show how to work from a 3D scan of your head and then sculpt some printable horns, adding detail to them, including repeating patterns and preparing it for printing. Cool stuff. Over on his channel, Russell makes us a video on his experiments with single point incremental forming. This uses a CNC mill with a smooth hemispherical tool acting like a forming ram for a thin sheet of metal. He experiments with a few different 3D shapes and some different materials like stainless steel, aluminum, and titanium. It's a cool experiment, but the real gem is where he reviews the parts to determine where the process succeeded and why it failed when it did. And from 247 Printing, we have a video where he experiments with 3D printing using his Voron 3D printer upside down. As we've seen from printers like the Positron 3D printer, there are some benefits to printing this way. It reduces resonance from the moving print head and mitigates the resulting artifacts. He shows his analysis of the benefits and drawbacks from this unique printing configuration. Interesting stuff, especially when it comes to bridging performance. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Becky Stern has a new video out in her electronics teaching series. And this one is all about getting your foot in the door with AI vision projects. If you want to build something like the Ruiz Brothers project we featured last week, check this video out. She covers the Seed Grove AI Vision module, the DF Robot Husky Lens, and the Arduino Nikola Vision. Some of these function as standalone boards and others work as breakouts that still need a microcontroller to drive them. Don't miss it. All right, and that is gonna do it for this week's show. Remember that you can learn more about all the projects that we covered by following the links down in the description. And while you're there, you can leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and hit subscribe so you won't miss the next one. As always, huge thanks to DigiKey for making this whole show possible and to you for watching. Take care, we'll see you soon.